Howdy folks and welcome to the Web of Deception with Dave Kranzler from InvestmentResearchDynamics.com and Rory Hall from TheDailyCoin.org. Dave and I are going to attempt to blow away some of the Orwellian fog that continually blows in from those wonderful people in Washington, D.C. and their manipulated numbers and their propaganda. And so let's take a look at what happened on this non-farm payroll day. Here we go. Treasury yields are soaring most since January 2009. Almost the entire Treasury complex is now up around 30 bips on the week. In percentage terms, this is the biggest yield spike for 30-year bonds since January 2009. 30 years back above 2.50%, 10 year is above 1.9, and the 7 is above 1.75 as 2-year yields have exploded 10 bips to 62 bips and 39% this week, the most on record. And that is your bond update for the morning. And what's going on over there? And this is according to Zero Hedge. And what you and I really, uh, Dave, wanted to talk about was the uh, BLS NFP. The Bureau of Labor Lies, I mean statistics, and the non-farm payroll. And what are your thoughts on what, what happened this morning on what on the numbers that were released? Hey, there's there's no BS like the BLS. <laughs> um, just as a quick aside on that treasury yield thing, what's 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 hilarious about that, and it just tells you how manipulated this market is is that the home builder sector, and it's no secret that I've been bearish on the home builder sector, um, the home builder sector stocks have been getting in a massive short squeeze and they've been running up on the fact that treasury yields have been coming down. I mean, we were at near record lows on mortgage rates last week. Um, but what's funny is that on this huge spike up in interest rates in the, in the treasury curve, the, the home builder stock index that I follow, the Dow Jones Home Construction Index, which is has the highest concentration of home builder stocks in it, is up 2.8% today. And it's it's so counterintuitive. This whole market is so counterintuitive. And it just tells you how manipulated it is. Because on a day like today, with, with interest rates soaring, the home builders should be getting crushed. Okay. Okay. Um, and it, this is a great opportunity to jump into the home builder stocks on the short side. And I have five awesome home builder reports that outline in detail on my website, investmentresearchdynamics.com, exactly why these home builders are insanely overvalued. And at some point they're going to go right off the cliff, but to revert back to today's non-farm payroll report, I actually posted, um, a blog post on this and it's just simply not a believable report. I mean, they, they, they're trying to tell us that 257,000 jobs were created in January and that would be up against the headwind of all the layoffs in the oil sector. And there's been a whole, not just radio shack, there's been a whole list of retailers that went belly up in the last couple months. So obviously those people are, are now unemployed also. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know where they're, because typically I thought that retailers, which makes up the largest chunk of our uh, GDP and our hiring, I thought that they traditionally lay people off beginning in January because the uh, holidays are over and there's no need for them. Or am I just not reading that right. I mean, isn't that what's uh, happened in the past? Well, yeah, I mean, th there, there should have been a seasonal factor, but, the, you know, obviously the BLS, you know, they do their seasonal adjustments, and no one knows how those adjustments happen. So they adjust out the fact that temporary employees in the retail sector get dumped in January. But it's not just, it's just not, it's not just retail and the oil sector. There's a very, there's a quiet exodus of jobs on Wall Street going on. And, and you're not really reading about it, but I have friends in New York and they're, you know, people are getting axed every day from these big banks. 
And they're not only getting axed from the sales and trading desks because sales and trading revenue is way down. They're also getting axed from the, the mortgage underwriting departments. I mean, we had a huge swath of people laid off from the mortgage underwriting departments of all the big banks. And it's, it's been continuing because uh, mortgage refinance volume, which is the bulk of mortgage application volume, has been falling off a cliff. Well, I just pulled up dailyjobcuts.com to confirm exactly what you're saying. As of today, f Friday, February the 6th, Siemens plans to lay off 7,400 job cuts worldwide, Ericsson 150, GlaxoSmithKline 27, Sony International 2,100 smartphone job cuts. Uh, yesterday on the 5th, state of Wisconsin's cutting 400 plus positions, Weatherford International 5,000. Uh, New Walton Corporation of Calgary International is 180. Bank of America Norfolk, 200. This is on February the 3rd. Uh, where's that? There was a J.P. Morgan Chase, 163 in Jacksonville. I presume that's Florida. And, I mean, it just goes on and on from there. I mean, CIBC International, 500 with a question mark. Tim Horton, Canada, 350 out of their headquarters office. That's on January the 30th, so I'm not sure how they're getting 257,000 positive. Well, no, no one is. It's it's a joke. Now, you know, yeah, there probably were some some part-time jobs created. I mean, um, I read a study where it showed that Walmart was cutting for every three full-time jobs, it would hire five part-timers. Okay, so, you know... <laughs> You're still not you're still not creating you're not net creating meaningful jobs there, but they're they're doing that to get around Obamacare. Correct. And and all the big companies are doing this. I mean, yes. what what I what I think is amusing about you know the GDP report and the non-farm payroll report, the inflation report is that people sit around and debate these numbers about what they mean as if the numbers actually have any kind of validity. <laughs> And I said right on my in my blog post at the end, it's it's like watching grown adults who are supposedly highly educated debating the merits of SpongeBob SquarePants versus Sesame Street. I mean, it doesn't even make sense to discuss these numbers because they're so fictitious. What I think will be interesting to see is obviously earlier this week the CEO of of, of Gallup polls yes. came out and said the unemployment numbers are a complete lie. And my bet is he won't have anything to say about this report because I'm sure they've already muzzled him. Well, and then he came out the next day, which was yesterday, and said that he's fearful that he might, quote, disappear. Yes, yes. I mean, that's, exactly. that, to me, that is very telling. That that's right. I'm sure he's already received threats on his family if he doesn't, you know, shut up about this. Well, but, he came out and said that he was, you know, mistaken and that everything was very, very clear and. I mean, it was, he made a huge redaction on that. Oh, I didn't see that he had, had yes. um, revised his previous, his yes. previous, his previous utterances of the truth. I didn't realize that he revised it. So at any rate, um, the most amusing part about this is as soon as the number hit, they just annihilated gold and silver, annihilated. you know, and, and, and. I, I guess I guess if if supposedly the Fed is going to hike interest rates because of this number, it's not good for gold, but it's great for the S and P five hundred, which is up right now um, almost half a percent, and it's been up higher today. So um, I mean, it's just it's the, the market is just so manipulated; it doesn't even nothing makes any sense whatsoever anymore. Um, yeah, silver is down. Uh, over three percent, gold is down about two and a half percent, and I mean, I I posted over at the dailycoin.org, you know, there's a fire sale. There's a fire sale going on right now for gold and silver. And that they they put a sixteen dollar handle on on silver, and I'm hoping that they're going to put an eleven hundred on gold because I'll just Mama needs a new set of shiny. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the tragedy is I don't even know, you know, how many people in this country actually really believe these numbers that the government puts out. They're just simply not believable. I don't think anybody does. 
anybody that has two working brain cells can't possibly look at the reality of their life and their situation and what's going on around them and and accept these numbers. They just can't. I mean, not anybody with, like I said, with a brain. I mean, they just, they don't, they don't add up. I mean, because we can't, there's only so many uh, restaurants that can hire. There's only so many hotels that can hire. And that, and that's it. I mean, and that's the only jobs that are being created. So, and if that, that's even if those jobs are even being created, I mean, you have to have people who can afford to pay for those services. True. And it, it's when you get downshifted from a full-time job at Walmart to a part-time job, I don't think you're running out to a restaurant every weekend to take your family to a restaurant. Uh, probably not. I mean, a, a colleague of mine took his, his family of five and, you know, three little kids, one who doesn't really eat anything, and it, it was $65 at Chili's. See, most people... I mean, the average American just can't afford that, so... Um, I mean, the numbers are a complete joke and it, it just, it just shows you the extent to which our government is just wrapping its tentacles of control around everything. And they aren't leaving anything for the rest of us. That's right. My suggestion would be, you don't, you, Dave, you don't sell gold or silver. You're not a dealer, right? No. Um, okay. I, I, I want to ask you. A, I manage an investment fund that um, we invest in physical gold and silver and mining stocks. And when investors cash out, they have the option of receiving part of their proceeds in actual physical gold and silver okay, that will deliver to them wherever they want it. So, but you're not a bullion dealer. No. Okay. And those that's a uh, not a private fund, but the, the gold and silver that are associated with it aren't for you can't just go in and get them and you can't no. sell them. And no. the reason I'm going, the reason what I'm driving at here is, is that would you say that, that now would be a good, good time for uh, people to, if they're going to acquire some gold and silver, that would now be a good time to do that? Tremendous time, tremendous time, because you're going to get to a point where it's going to be difficult to source gold and silver, except at much higher prices and much higher premiums to spot. Interestingly, um, we've had, we've had inquiries about investing in our fund this week for the first time in about six or seven months. And we did have some money come in last fall, which, you know, the fall of 2014, which kind of surprised me because historically most Americans don't jump into an investment until it's already moved 50%, you know, to the upside, to the upside. So I, I do think that a lot of people are starting to understand what's going on in the bullion market with the manipulation. And I, I think that they're starting to understand, you know, why they need to be invested in this sector. The, one of the good things about what it sounds like, and I'm not familiar with your fund and I'm not, I don't get any stipends. I don't get anything from what I'm about to say, but it sounds like that if I were to be invested in, in your fund, that if I wanted to, at the end of the day, I could say, Dave, I want, you know, ex I want the equivalent of my cash holdings in gold or silver or both. Is that right? Yes. The way it works is it's you, you, you have the option of receiving your pro rata share. Um, everyone who invests in the fund, you're investing in an, in an LLC and, and you're, you're an equity owner of everything the fund owns. So, if the fund is invested, if the allocation is 50% bullion and 50% mining shares and you cash out with $100,000, you can receive up to $50,000 worth of, of bullion and then you'd get the other $50,000 in, in cash. Well, Dave, is there anything else that we need to uh, bring to the fore at this point or do you want to leave it there? Um, just really quickly, because I've been I've been saying all along that eventually the ECB and Greece are going to work out a solution. It's in both sides' best interests, and especially the ECB because they can't afford to have Greece default on their debt because then it'll trigger a massive explosion of of credit default swap OTC derivatives, 
And all of the European banks, plus many of the U.S. banks, are heavily exposed to that. Um, not just Greece, but they're exposed to counterparty risk associated with Greece. Um, I did notice that the ECB has offered a, I think it was a $30 billion liquidity facility made available to Greek banks. And this was two days after they said that at the end of this month, Greek banks can't put up Greek sovereign debt as repo collateral. So, you know, on one hand, they restricted liquidity to the Greek financial system. And then two days later, they come out and reopen liquidity to the Greek financial system. And in my mind, it kind of reinforces, and again, I could be wrong, who knows, but it kind of reinforces my view that eventually they're going to work out some sort of settlement arrangement over this. And it'll involve more money printing and more transfer of wealth from the wealth producing northern european countries down to countries like greece so and then spain spain will be up next i think i, I would agree with that spain is definitely uh neck they are on deck as they say right but to the extent that they can't afford to let greece go away and default on its debt they really can't afford to let spain um no it's default, much larger so. it's a much right, larger exactly. economy exactly now what is what role is Russia going to play? Because Russia has already made it very clear that they are more than willing to help. And how yes, will that and play I, into I think it? Greece is just going to use Russia as a stocking horse. Greece doesn't want to leave either because if they had to go to the drachma, revert back to the drachma, they'd have to print so much of it, it would create massive hyperinflation in Greece. But, they, but we've already seen that happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've already seen something along those lines with Iceland where they threw the bankers out. They said, we, aren't, we don't want to play your game anymore. Get out of here, and we're going back to the Krona. And that's what they did. And they went through, uh, they suffered through a couple of years of, of things not going very well, and now they're back. As far as I know, they are in pretty good shape. I don't, again, I, 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 don't, I don't remember the specifics of Iceland. And, I, I mean, it's, that's a much smaller... That's like a microcosm version of what's going on in Greece. And Greece is in way worse shape than Iceland was. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you can compare the two. It's not comparable. Oh, okay. Well, I just know that people taking back their uh, financial sovereignty always is a good thing, in my opinion. <laughs> you know? I agree. But in this case, I think it's a lose-lose situation for both sides. And ultimately, it's all going to be a lose-lose situation for everyone. But... To the extent that they want to be able to kick the can down the road, which is what they want to do, they got to work out a solution here. Hmm. In my opinion, I mean, who knows? It's fascinating watching it unfold. It is. It's uh, it's an interesting read, that's for sure. Now, part of me wants it to blow up because then it would it would blow these bankers uh, apart. And then the other part of me goes, well, that's probably going to get really ugly really quick for everybody on the planet if that happens. So, but I think I'll just leave it right there. What do you think, Dave? I think that's a good idea, especially ahead of a weekend that we all want to try and enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> well, all righty then. Well, Dave, I certainly appreciate it. And we will, uh, we'll do this again in the early part of next week and look forward to uh, talking to you. I do too, Rory. Thanks. All right.